Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 76. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook YouTubers Love Excel 72 to 77. Hey, this YouTuber said, hey, I want to calculate my summary statistics, do this data analysis based on this data set with the name of this data set sitting in this cell. But he wanted to be able to dump new data sets in. For instance, in a moment, we'll dump this toy sales data in there, which is a different size. And he wanted the range to have a different name. And he wanted the functions to always update. So let's see how to do this. The first thing is we have to name this data set. And if you click at the top and control down arrow, you can see there's like 200 records. Control up arrow. He wants to very quickly name it car sales. Well, a keyboard shortcut to highlight this whole table um, is control asterisk and use the asterisk on the number pad. And then since we have it all highlighted, the, the cells we want, the data we want named is sitting below a single field name. We can use the keyboard shortcut control shift F3. That is a way to create a name from the selection. And look, it's asking, hey, is the name in the top row? And our name is in the top row, so we click OK. You can see I have these formulas already set up here. We'll see how to do this average one. Now, again, we want to add new data here with a new field name at the top. So we want this average function to actually look here for the name of this range. So let's try it equals average. Hey, we know that we've named it car sales. So I'm just going to click in this cell right here. Close parentheses and control enter. Ooh, that's divide by uh, zero error. Now there's a problem. Let's make sure we have the right range named. Let's click up here and point to car sales. Yeah, it, got, it found the name when we named it. Sure enough, it looks like it's looking at the right range. So that's not the problem. The problem is, let's click in this cell and hit F2. And we can do a little trick here. If you highlight a certain part of a formula and hit F9, it evaluates it. As soon as you see words surrounded by double quotes, you know Excel does not think of it as a range. It thinks of it as a word. It's text. So Control Z. And what we need to do is there's a function that will convert text to a range. And since we have a named range called car sales, this will work. I'm going to click here indirect function. That is going to take that A10 and convert it to a range. Control Enter. And sure enough, that works. Now hit F2. And if you want to prove it to yourself, highlight very carefully. And we'll do that F9 trick again there. Hit F9. Sure enough, you can see up here 13, 818, 29, 828. And those are the values that sit there. Immediately hit Control Z, because that's not what we want. Now, remember, the goal is to be able to have uh, this indirect always look there for a new name. For instance, escape. And then I'm going to come over here. And I have this other data set here. Uh, I'm going to use my same keyboard shortcut, Control Asterisk. Remember, that only works if there's blank spaces all around it. If it was touching there, then it would highlight that too. Notice this is a much smaller data set. And it's going to have a different name. So we want to have our functions update somehow. I'm going to Control C. And then I'm going to come over here and Control, oops. We forgot to delete the data. So I'm going to click here and Control Asterisk. And then what's the keyboard shortcut for delete? Oh yeah, delete. And then I'm, uh-oh, we can see we have a problem already here. So I'm going to click over here, Control Asterisk, Control C. Click right here and Control V is paste. Now, we need to fix this um, formula right here. And I'm going to do it a 2007 way. I actually have the finished formula here. Uh, if, you wanna, if you have 2003, you'll have to use this formula right here. But let's click here and hit F2. There's a great new function in 2007 called if error. And if this thing evaluates to an error, you just tell it what to put in the cell. So let's try it. If error. If error, and notice there's two arguments, the value, which is our calculating average and indirect, and then what to put in the cell if it's an error. So I'm going to click at the end and comma to jump to the next uh, bolded part of the screen tip, and then put double quote, double quote, which means blank, and close parentheses. Hey, that looked like it worked now. Now, um, what do we have to do? Oh, very quickly, since we want this, this range here named toy cells, we click there. Control asterisk and use our keyboard shortcut for naming from selection. Control Shift F3. 
it says the top row, and we click OK. And sure enough, it got the right data. Let's click in the cell right here and hit F2. If you don't believe it, you could uh, highlight this indirect and see if it actually, or you could uh, double click this A10 and hit F9. Oh, it got toy sales, Control Z, and then highlight the indirect all the way to the green, and then hit F9, uh, Escape. I highlighted too many. It was just um, not the green ones. Yeah, that gave me an error there. That was because I had that, that green one highlighted. And then I'm going to hit F9. Sure enough, you can see up here 24, 267, 16, 9. So those are exactly the values. So our goal was to have a function that will change no matter what data we uh, put here. I'm going to try it one more time. Click over there, Control Asterisk, Delete. Just for kicks, I'm going to type. Um, sales, and then enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then highlight the whole range here, and we'll use our keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F3. It's got the top row, and then click OK, and sure enough, they all pop up. So we have our summary statistics, our data analysis based on this uh, changing data set and a changing named range up at the top. All right, see you next Excel trick.